So what was previously a sensible, compact, 6-core gaming machine is now a terrifyingly powerful 16-core, 32-thread hotbox with a ton more multi-threaded power. But just how irresponsible is it to run a Ryzen 5950X with low-profile cooling like this? And if you haven't seen the build video yet of this system, you should definitely check that out and I will have that linked down below. But basically, it's just one of the most extreme compact systems that I've ever built inside the 5-liter Skyreach 4 Mini. Now, this system runs a lot better than you would expect. Our thermals and noise levels are actually quite good. At least that was the case when we had the 6-core 5600X in there. Today though, we're going to see how irresponsible it is to run the 16-core 5950X in here and kind of what you can expect with the limited cooling that we have available. Now, before we dive into the testing to see if this is possible, it's important to understand the frequency and temperature behavior of Ryzen CPUs. Similar to GPUs, as the processor heats up, clock speeds are dialed back, and we get the most performance and highest clock speeds when the processor is running as cool as possible. So as an example, in previous testing, I've managed to get the 16 core from last generation, the 3950X, to run on just a 37 mil tall CPU cooler. AMD Ryzen CPUs are able to do this because they can auto-regulate the amount of power and clock speeds that they're running at depending on the cooling that they have available. So here, for example, we are running on a 37 mil tall CPU cooler, but clock speeds are 200 megahertz lower than what you'd get with sufficient cooling. The cooler that we're using in our test system here is a bit larger than that though. It's the 47 mil tall Alpenfone Blackridge, but it's also installed inside a case compared to the previous testing with the 3950X, which was done on an open test bench. Now, this is the strongest 47 7 mil tall CPU cooler that I've tested, and that means that it's the most effective air cooler for cases such as the Skyreach 4 Mini, the K39, the Den A4S FX, and the Form T1 in three slot GPU mode. So let's start off by taking a look at the complete stock performance. Installing the CPU, enabling the memory profile, and running Blender, this is what we get. That temperature and frequency relationship that I mentioned earlier, that is in full effect right here. To prevent the system from crashing, the CPU lowers power and frequency to keep things under control. With a default temperature ceiling of 90 degrees C, this build has the 5950X throttling to 115 watts of socket power as opposed to the usual 140 watts or so, and just 3450 megahertz as opposed to the usual 4100 to 4200 that you'd see with sufficient cooling. So the system runs, it's technically stable with no crashing, but clock speeds are around 15 to 20% lower to what you'd see with sufficient cooling. And I think the knee-jerk reaction here to lower thermals would be to enable AMD Ryzen's Eco Mode, which simply reduces the power limit and current limit values of the CPU. In this case, the power ceiling is reduced from 142 watts down to 87 watts, and we get a significant reduction in thermals here as well, now just 74 degrees. However, when we take a look at the clock speeds, they're absolutely abysmal in comparison. The 16-core average is now just 2460 megahertz. You're going to see a huge reduction in all core performance with frequencies that low. Now though, let's check out another option. Precision Boost Overdrive 2 is a recent addition from AMD and something that we had a look at in depth in a previous video. And honestly, it's pretty great when it comes to undervolting. I'll have that video linked down below to bring anyone up to speed, but the short of it is that it allows the CPU to use a more optimized voltage and frequency curve. And the result is that higher frequencies are achieved at the same power and voltage. And that's exactly what we see here with a negative negative offset of minus 15. Thermals don't change at all, power is reduced a little, but then clock speeds are around 110 megahertz higher on average. So here we can reclaim a bit of that clock speed loss due to the extremely poor thermals, but we're still around 600 megahertz lower compared to what you'd see with sufficient cooling. If we then take this undervolt profile and then add both a 115 watt power limit and an 85 degree C thermal limit, we can get some realistic usability and performance. So here the 5950X runs at 115 watts until it hits 85 degrees C, then reduces power and frequency to stay at that temperature target. This would definitely be the most optimized way to run the 5950X or 5900X 
in a cooling limited scenario. Firstly, the best PBO2 undervolt that your processor can handle, then a power limit, depending on the amount of cooling that you have. In our case, 115 watts is suitable. Then a thermal limit of around 85 to 90 degrees C, depending on what you're comfortable with. I did also experiment with a manual frequency and voltage lock of 3.8 gigahertz at just 0.975 volts. It was stable in terms of performance, but since there's no automatic power and thermal throttling, once you switch things into manual, the 5950X would eventually exceed 90 degrees C and keep rising. So I definitely wouldn't recommend this versus what we had previously. So I think, yes, this setup can definitely work. 16 cores in the Skyreach 4 Mini or another slim kind of form factor case that you might have in mind. It'll work, you can get the system kind of stable and running with reasonable kind of clock speeds, but the performance is gonna be way off compared to something with sufficient cooling, say an NKS M1 with a 240 mil liquid cooler. Granted, you can't exactly put an end case in a backpack like you can with this. I mean, this is just unbelievably tiny, but I think the use cases for a system like this, you know, especially you need a monitor and a keyboard and everything for it to work. I think the use cases just like the case are quite slim. So I guess you can kind of think of this system as like an Intel NUC9 Extreme on steroids, an extremely portable system designed for creators and gamers with as much CPU and GPU performance that a five liter enclosure can handle. And to be fair, this CPU and cooler setup would work a lot better in a case with some additional active cooling around the heatsink, such as a Dan A4 or a Form T1. The trade-off there, of course, though, is the increase in volume and that the overall system won't be as portable. And I already know that there will be more than a few comments saying how pointless it is to buy a Ryzen 5950X, a CPU with so much performance and potential, only to handicap it with a small CPU cooler. And to some point, I totally agree. That's why I have a full custom loop for the 5900X in my own system. But for some people, performance and portability are just as important as each other. So I guess that's exactly where a system like this comes in. Just be aware of the performance and thermal compromises. And at least with the current hardware that's out, this is as fast as this PC is going to get. So I think we'll leave it there for now. And if you haven't watched the initial build video, I will have that linked down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.